If you've ever watched an anime that takes place in a school setting, chances are you've seen a bento or two. Sometimes it's used as a way for a character to show affection for another character. Sometimes it's used to show that the character is a skilled cook or establish that they're from a rich family. Sometimes it's used to set up a comedic bit. And a lot of times it's just for the anime to flex how good they can make food look. Now, if you combine the two, anime and bento, that is, you get what we call Kyara Ben, which is bento made to resemble characters. And I actually took a class with Kaho on how to make our very own Kyara Ben, specifically Totoro and Pikachu. We took the class through Washo Cook in Kanagawa, which is a cooking class that specializes in teaching foreigners how to cook easy Japanese dishes. Except today, we decided to challenge ourselves with learning how to make Kyara Ben with the help of Noriko Sensei. And I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step process on how we made the bento, starting with Pikachu. Number one, for the ears, you need to crack two eggs into a bowl and mix it with one teaspoon of dashi powder, three teaspoons of sugar, one tablespoon of water, and a pinch of salt. Add some olive oil into a tamagoyaki pan, and once it's hot, pour a quarter of the egg mixture in, coating the pan in a thin layer of egg, and make sure you break the air bubbles. Once the layer is half cooked, use your chopsticks to start rolling the egg towards the handle. Once the first layer is rolled, move it back up to the front and pour another quarter of the egg mixture in the pan and repeat the process. You're basically going to roll the tamagoyaki into itself like an egg snowball until you've used up all the egg mixture. After slicing off the imperfect ends, cut the tamagoyaki into four pieces and BAM! You got yourself some Pikachu ears on standby! If you want to make heart-shaped eggs for additional decoration, cut the tamagoyaki in fourths and then cut those pieces in half diagonally. And once you put them together, they become cute little hearts. Noriko Sensei pre-prepared some egg crepe sheets, but the way you make those is by pouring a quarter of the egg mixture into the tamagoyaki pan and not rolling it. So it comes out like a thin sheet instead. To make egg flower decorations, cut one of your egg crepes in half and then fold it in half. Trim the ends, and then take the folded side and make 1 centimeter cuts across the sheet, making sure not to cut all the way through. Roll up the sheet and stick a small piece of uncooked spaghetti through the stem so it stays together. And ta-da! They sort of resemble paper flowers, right? Noriko Sensei taught us another quick and easy bento filling side dish where you take chikuwa fish cake and cut them into thirds, throw them in a bowl with a spoonful of powdered seaweed flakes, a teaspoon of Japanese mayo, and microwave it for 30 seconds. Oh, I forgot to mention you also throw in a spoonful of soy sauce. Normally, it's meant to be fried to be made into isobayage, but this is a faster alternative for the mornings where you just don't have time to dirty another pan. And of course, if chikoa and powdered seaweed flakes are not easily accessible or not to your liking, this is just a space filler for bento, so you could realistically add pretty much whatever you want to add variety to your kataben. Of course, no bento is complete without those iconic octopus-shaped sausages. So we cut some small sausages in half and used a sausage cutter to make the octopus shape. They were a little hard and messy to use, so I prefer to use a knife to make the cuts, but these are handy for if you want the least chance of injury. Saute the octopus sausages in the tamagoyaki pan, and if you'd like, add a teaspoon of ketchup for that extra flavor. Now for Pikachu's head. Using a piece of plastic wrap, scoop some rice onto it with a little indent, Add salmon flakes for the filling, and then wrap it up and form it into the shape of Pikachu's chubby little head. Then, wrap the rice ball head with one of those egg crepe sheets. These egg sheets that Noriko Sensei had ready were circular shaped, so for these particular sheets, make sure you're using a small circular pan instead of the rectangular tamagoyaki pan. Place the head in the bento box and add the ears. For all of the little face details, Noriko Sensei pre-prepared the nori already punched out and ready for assembling to save us time. For these, she used nori cutters, which punch out your desired shape for you, which is a lot easier and neater than painstakingly cutting the shapes out yourself with scissors, but obviously if you don't have nori cutters, you're going to have to cut them with scissors or an X-Acto or something. Use a toothpick to carefully place the nori details onto the head. For the whites of the eyes, we used a very small circle puncher to cut holes into sliced white cheese. For Pikachu's bright red cheeks, take a stick of imitation crab and carefully peel off the red layer with a toothpick. Then, take a small circle cutter and cut out the shape of Pikachu's red cheeks, and stick them on with a little bit of mayonnaise. You can use the same technique to make a Pokeball, which Noriko Sensei had readily prepared using white fish cake, nori, and the red imitation crab skin. After finishing Pikachu's face, we filled up the space around it by adding in our prepared bento ingredients, like the octopus sausage, heart-shaped eggs, egg flowers, chikoa fish cake, lettuce, and some steamed broccoli. 
After all, a cat event shouldn't just be cute. Ideally, it should also be balanced. And bam! One very cute Pikachu cat event completed. Now on to Totoro. To replicate Totoro's gray color, we used a mortar and pestle to grind up black sesame seeds into a finish powder. It was my very first time using one of these, and I loved hearing the sesame seeds crackle, and they smelled really, really good. <laughs> Afterwards, we added it to white rice and mixed it together until it had a nice speckled gray color. Similarly to how we shaped Pikachu's head, we used plastic wrap to shape the rice into Totoro's body. Then we repeated the same process with less rice to form the triangle-shaped ears. For Totoro's white belly, take a little bit of white rice, add a spoonful of salmon flakes in the indent, and then shape it into a circle. Press it onto the Totoro body and make sure you leave space for his face details. For the whites of Totoro's eyes, use a boba straw to cut the shape out of sliced white cheese, and then use tiny cut nori for his pupils. And of course, we use nori for the belly detailing too. Although it's a bit difficult to find nori cutters for this specific shape, so these have to be cut by hand. For decorating the negative space around Totoro, Noriko Sensei suggested following the theme of forest and nature, so we arranged the steamed broccoli to look like Totoro was sitting on top of the trees. Then we stuck an egg heart above him and threw in a couple egg flowers. We also flipped over the octopus sausages so they resembled flowers. This is when we learned that even when you use the same bento ingredients for different kataben, you can find unique ways to arrange them to fit the theme. After squeezing in the Chikoa fish cake, this bento looked extra packed and scrumptious. And for the finishing touches, we used a cat ear nori punch to make the triangle nose and uncooked spaghetti for the whiskers. And ta-da! You have some beautifully constructed kataben. I think Kaho and I did a pretty good job working as a team, and these turned out so much cuter than I thought they would. Now these looked really good, but how did they taste? Pikachu! Pika! All that hard work. <laughs> it does, honestly, I feel like yeah. the cuteness makes it taste better. Mm. Mm, you appreciate the food more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Oh my god, it's really good. Mm. Spoiler, it tasted really, really good. We felt a little guilty destroying our adorable creations, but they tasted so good we couldn't stop eating once we started. And you might think the bento boxes look pretty small, but these lunches were surprisingly really filling. Probably because we crammed every nook and cranny with ingredients, but it was a very satisfying reward for all of our hard work. We got to take home the instruction sheets for the kataben that we made, and it gave me an idea. What if I used some of the skills that I'd learned in this class and tried making my own kataben? And that's exactly what I did! Strap in, loser! Video's not over yet! I really wanted to try my hand at making a bento that looked like Sailor Moon and another bento that looked like Karo from Cardcaptor Sakura, starting with sketches of what sort of design I was going for. I purchased a few bento tools from Amazon and Daiso, like nori punchers, cookie cutters, tiny scissors, anything that could help make my life easier. I got all the necessary ingredients, read through the instruction sheets Noriko Sensei gave me, woke up bright and early to start prepping the ingredients exactly how I was taught. There was no way I could fail. I'm an artist, so I should have a natural affinity for this type of craft. Right? Right? You made it look so easy! I... I... I can't serve this! Ready for the reveal? Yes. Uh -huh. Three. <laughs> Two... <laughs> what the... What the fuck? So listen, there's a few factors that contributed to my first attempts failing miserably. In an attempt to replicate Usagi's light peachy skin color, I purchased a chestnut mix that you're supposed to cook with your rice, and I had the bright idea of mashing up the chestnuts before adding them to the rice so they'd add more color, but I think it just made the rice extra starchy and did nothing color-wise. So I was left with still white rice that was so sticky and clumped together you could pick up the whole thing with a rice paddle. 
The rice is one of the most important parts of the catabin, so I already effed up there. Number two, I did not take into account the amount of bento space I had to work with or how small some of my pieces really had to be, so all the proportions ended up kind of whack and I hardly had any space to add the extra ingredients. So what you're left with is a not very cohesive or cute looking bento. Number three, and my biggest mistake, I was trying to make two bentos at once. I really thought I could pull a Noriko Sensei and whip out two bentos in one sitting and have them both be delicious, but I spread myself too thin and ended up making two mediocre cold bentos instead of putting all of my energy and power into one. On top of that, one of my judges, Connor, had to leave to catch a flight in an hour, so I felt the pressure of having to rush and complete them in time. Canavans require time and patience, and I broke that cardinal rule like a fool. Cut circle shape. <laughs> it looks so messy. <laughs> Ignore it, hang on. I'm looking for the right shapes. Give me a second. This is so messy. Is this the only circle shape? Number four, Connor doesn't like fish cake. We'll try the fish cake. I don't like fish cake. You, you don't, don't like, like fish, fish cake? cake? No. You don't like Od wait, you don't like Odin? <sighs> you don't like Odin? No. Uh, I, I I like it in the hot pot, but I cannot believe this. Trash. That's not on me, that's on him for having bad taste. So, it wasn't a success. But I'm an artist. I can't just accept failure and think, well, I suck at making carabentos and I wasted a lot of time and effort. Why bother? No, we're gonna do it again! Strap in, losers! Video's still not over! I decided to make a second attempt, except this time I would work on one bento at a time. Starting with Caro. Here's how I corrected it. Number one, I didn't try to do anything experimental with the rice or any of the ingredients this time. I stuck with what I knew, and what I know is that white rice cooked in my rice cooker tastes amazing, so that's exactly what I did. No more stickiness or hardness, just good old fluffy rice. Number two, I wrapped Kiro's head and ears in an egg crepe like I had originally planned to do. Similar to how Noriko Sensei did it with Pikachu's head, I used plastic wrap to help keep that smooth, balled up shape. Number three, I punched out more accurate Nori shapes for Caro's eyes and nose. During my first attempt, I made the eyes and inner ear parts too big and completely forgot the nose so it didn't even look like Caro. It then occurred to me that perhaps I should have put the parts together on some test rice beforehand so I could be sure they were proportionate to the character. But hey, I learned. Here's a bento tip. If you're using a nori puncher and it looks like one of these stencil things, make sure the shape you're cutting has jagged edges so it'll actually cut through the nori sheet. If it doesn't have those jagged edges, it will not work. Those are meant for softer things like cheese, ham, and fish cake. It also helps to have one of these silicone mats to place underneath the nori so that it'll cut easier. I also recommend cutting out extra shapes because nori is extremely fragile and chances are you'll break a few of them. The cherry blossom shaped carrots were a little weird. Cherry blossoms should be pink, so I used ham, and they turned out great! And then I accidentally crushed the cutter in the garbage disposal right afterwards, but it did its job, and it will be remembered fondly. And this is how attempt number two turned out. Wow, look at that! Doesn't that look so much better? Now the appearance has certainly improved, but how is the taste? Okay, Connor, I know the last one was not good, and so I remade it, I perfected the recipe. Okay. Perfected. You have, and you have to be honest. Okay. Was I not honest enough last time? No, you were honest. I, I, I feel like I could have been more honest. No, don't say I, that. I could have been more honest. Well, you need to be hundred percent honest. And that looks way better really? already. Really? Yeah. Really? What do you think? What do you think? It's it looks way cute. better. Yeah. Okay. Is this from the? Um, I'm gonna sound like a boomer. It's from Sailor Moon. That's from Card Captor Soccer. Uh, yeah, I knew that. That's what I meant. Um, <laughs> You know how like the last one, it like looked depressing. Yes, I know. Like when I, I like aware. the colors weren't as vibrant. I I like, realized this broccoli looks more alive. Here. I realized my biggest mistake was I was trying to make two in one sitting, mm. which was not the move. Actually, nice broccoli. Oh, okay, good. I'm a big broccoli guy. So <laughs> that's good. Mm. Okay. Mm. Good sausage. All right, let's crack this boy's face okay. open. Oh no, Carol. I'm so sorry. Hmm. Mmm, the rice looks better than last time. Yeah. Oh, there's salmon in there as well? Yeah. Okay. Mmm. That's so much better. Yay! It's like actually good. Oh, fuck yeah! <laughs> now to reattempt my pathetic Sailor Moon bento. Here's how I corrected this one. 
Number one, it turns out the secret to getting that light peachy color for my rice was in my fridge the entire time. It's miso. Simply take a bit of rice and mix some miso into it until you get your desired peachy color. Don't be too heavy handed with it though, because miso, while delicious, is quite salty. So for that reason, I decided to opt out of adding the salted salmon filling. Number two, in attempt one, I made her head too damn big. There was hardly any space left for her signature pigtails. So this time around, I used less rice. And of course, since her head was smaller, I also had to downsize the shapes I cut out for the tiara and bun accessories. Number three, simpler facial expression. Listen, anime eyes are really, really hard to replicate in a bento. Like it's already a struggle to make two identical anime eyes when I draw, so imagine trying to do it with fragile seaweed paper. So I figured out the perfect facial expression that was easy to punch out and still captured Usagi's personality. Number four, I made her hair more pronounced. I took the extra effort to wrap her meatball buns in egg crepe, and for her pigtails, I cut off pieces of the tamagoyaki so that they'd be shaped more like her hair and less like two ugly egg rectangles that didn't look anything like hair. If you look at my first attempt, you'll also notice that some of the other ingredients crowd around the pigtails, covering them up and making them harder to notice. To combat this, I place the ingredients around her head first to make a sort of platform for her pigtails, and then place the egg pigtails on top so that they pop out more. And this is how Sailor Moon attempt number two turned out. I was really proud of how this one turned out, and I even added a few extra ham hearts to match the new facial expression. Now to see if it passed the taste test. <laughs> what do you think? I could, I see it now. Is yeah. It? yeah. Better? I see it. Yeah, much better. Cuter than the first attempt? Yeah. The rice is miso flavored, because that's how I got mm, her skin color. Mmm, much better. Mm, better? Mm. Try the meatball. Oh, yeah, meatball? In her buns, because she's meatball head. Oh, meatball head! Ah, isn't that creative? Mm, that's funny. Mmm, -hmm. yeah, <laughs> it tastes good. Oh my god. Good? What happened? You leveled up. <laughs> Mmm. I'm your eye now. Okay. Mm. It's good? Mmm. Mm -hmm. Yay! Mm -hmm. I did it! My bento redemption arc had finally been successful. Maybe with a third or fourth try, I can make them look even better, but for now, I was happy with the glow ups. Caravans are a bit difficult, but they're a lot of fun to make. Of course, you don't necessarily have to make a character to make a good looking bento. Using the exact same ingredients, I put together this very normal looking bento which is equally as delicious, much easier and faster to put together and still very pretty on its own. In my opinion, you can choose to disagree if you'd like. I just wanted to try tackling this new art form and I actually learned a lot, which I owe to Noriko Sensei's very fun lessons. I definitely want to try making some more characters in the future, like Guoba, Pompompurin, and Kopenchan. So if I ever do attempt those, I'll be sure to post them on my Instagram and YouTube community page. Big thank you again to Shibuya Kaho for finding and taking the Washo Cook class with me. Links to both her socials and Washo Cook's website will be linked in the description. Admittedly, this video was supposed to be done way sooner and be way simpler, except I didn't anticipate screwing up and having to explain it, but hope you enjoyed seeing me struggle. And uh, if you end up making your own Kyaraben, please tag me on Twitter so I can see it. Okay, see you around or after the holidays.